Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I hope all of you are well. My name is Alina Dobra, and I'm working as an admin admission manager looking after home EU and international students at AHNZ Associates London office. I would like to welcome everyone to our weekly live session, bringing you today one of our key partners, University of Buckingham. But before I introduce you our new guest, Tino, uh, who is working as an international student recruitment manager at the University of Buckingham, I would like to inform you who AHNZ Associates is. The company is a platform which connects a bridge between the students and UK universities. AHNZ provides counseling to the prospective students based on their previous qualification, future ambitions, expectation, affordability, budget, and entry requirements of the universities. AHNZ um, has been operating over one decade now, serving more than 250,000 students. Since operation, we have more than 30 branches around the world, just to make it convenient for all of you to come and to see us face to face. Currently, we are collaborating with more than 130 universities in the UK, and this includes private and public universities, as well as Russell Group University. I would also like to make you aware that all of our colleagues are well experienced and graduated from the from the UK universities. And some of them were certified by the British Council, trained by the UCAS and UK universities. One of our key points is that we provide end-to-end -end service and support during your journey with us, which is free of charge. The greatest and the most pleasuring statement we have for you is our visa rate, as we have our compliance team, which will help you and guide you through all the process. We are proud to say that our student satisfaction rate is more than 98%, and as a result of our hard and dedicated work, we, we gain more than 11 times the title of top recruitment award winners. But if you'd like to find out more information about AHNZ, please, please visit our website and follow us on all the social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Google, or LinkedIn. Now, I would like to introduce our special guest, Tina, from University of Buckingham. Good morning, Tina. How are you today? Good morning, Alina, and good morning, every good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone else from around the world. Uh, so today, um, in our session, we will discuss about the University of Buckingham. General information, we will go with Tino through the entry requirements, how to get an offer letter from the university, and how to, to meet the conditions. I think Tina already uh, prepared for us a presentation today. I have. Okay, if you can share the screen. Okay, can everybody see that? Okay, great, we can see. It. Okay, great. So good morning, everybody. As Alina said, my name is Tino. Don't worry about my surname. It's long and complicated. Just call me Tino. Uh, and I am International Student Recruitment Manager at the University of Buckingham. Uh, and I've been working at Buckingham since 2014, so I've been here quite a while now. And um, I'm just going to basically run through this presentation uh, and give you as much information as I can. And then in the meantime, if you have any questions, put them in the chat and then we'll open up for questions at the end, I think. Is that right, Alina? 
Yes, and also I want to remind everyone that after this session from 11 a.m., we'll have a Zoom one-to-one -one where everyone can join and we'll have Tino also there and also um, people from all the branches. So if you have any question, they can assess your file um, individually and can they, they advise you how to submit the application and how the uh, application process is going. Great. So, Thanks, Alina. Thank I'll you. start the presentation in that case. Okay, so first of all, who are we? Who is the uni what are what is the University of Buckingham? So um, in the UK, we have three types of universities. We have the majority of universities, which are what we call state funded universities. In other words, they're they're funded by the British government to some extent. Um, we have private universities, which are universities that are normally owned by a parent company. Uh, and they are what we call for-profit universities. In other words, they are they are there to make a profit to pay shareholders. And then we have a small number of universities, and Buckingham was the very first of these uh, universities, which are known as independent universities. What that means is that although we're not government funded, we are independent. Uh, we're, we're not government funded at all. However, we are a, a charitable trust, and we are not for profit. So we don't have to pay anybody. Uh, dividends, we don't have to pay anybody, we don't have any shareholders, and we are not owned by anybody. We're a, 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 an independent entity, charitable trust, and we have a royal charter. We were the, as I said, we were the first independent university, uh, and as an independent university, we have freedoms that other universities don't have. And one of the things that we developed right, way back in the late 1970s was the two-year degree. And so therefore, we are now known as the home of the two-year degree. We were the pioneers of the two-year degree, for undergraduates, obviously, but postgraduate is slightly different. Um, and what it means that the, is that you can um, complete an undergraduate degree with full honours in two years in almost every subject except medicine. Medicine is slightly different, and we'll come on to that later. Um, uh, we are focused on student welfare and well-being. So we are a very small university. Uh, and we have a very strong welfare department, which covers everything that students may encounter on their journey through their studies, everything from loneliness to um, uh, medical conditions. Um, we help students with, um, you know, various different issues around, you know, it might be dyslexia. Um, we have very strong support for students in, in all sort of, with all sorts of backgrounds that may need support. Um, and um, uh, and the reason we've got a little picture of a dog above that is that we have welfare dogs on campus that you can go and hang out with uh, if you're feeling down or you're feeling stressed or whatever, you can go and hang out with the dogs and take them for a walk, all sorts of other bits and pieces like that as well that we offer at Buckingham around student welfare and wellbeing. Um, because of the structure of the two-year degree, particularly for undergraduate, but on most postgraduate programmes as well, we offer a January or September intake. And I'll talk a bit more about that later. We're, ve we, we're a very small campus in a, a town called Buckingham. We're named after the town. Um, and um, Buckingham is a small market town in a, uh, rural um, Buckinghamshire. Our nearest big city is Milton Keynes or Oxford in the other direction. Um, it's about 20 minutes away. I actually live in Milton Keynes and commute into Buckingham every day. Um, but the town itself is small, and that means that it's a, it, it, it has a very low crime rate, and therefore we are the fifth safest, safest campus in the UK, and actually this, the, the safest campus in England. Um, and it, as, as I said, it's a campus-based university. Um, we don't have multiple campuses spread across different areas. The only other campus that we do have is in Crewe, um, and that specialises only in medicine and allied health programmes. All other programmes are taught at Buckingham, including medicine, um, but all our allied health programmes and a small cohort of medicine students are taught at Crewe uh, in the north of England near Manchester. That's our only other campus. Um, and we'll talk about that a bit later as well. OK, let's move on to the next slide. So what makes us unique? Uh, we're sixth for student satisfaction in England, uh, according to the National Student Survey. The National Student Survey is a survey that's undertaken by normally second year students uh, and it's completely anonymous. So students are able to write exactly what they feel about their university 
uh, and uh, how they feel about their university and their experience there. And we came sixth in the, U in the UK for that. We have a staff student ratio of one in 10. It's probably one of the smallest staff student ratios in the UK. That means one academic to 10 students uh, across the, the whole university. We specialize in small group teaching and the Oxbridge Star Tutorial System. So what that means is that a, um, your, your uh, lectures will never be more than 150 people, but actually on average between 35 and 65 people in a lecture. And that lecture is always followed up by a tutorial with the same lecturer in groups of never more than eight, but on average between three and five people. And actually a lot of those tutorials take place in lecturers study uh, and you have roundtable discussions uh, following up on the themes of the lecture that the, the lecturer has delivered. So that's kind of how it works. We And it's the same system of teaching that Oxford and Cambridge deliver um, uh, in their universities. Um, uh, we offer additional language courses in French and Spanish. Uh, and although University of Buckingham is very small, about 40% of our students are international students from about 110 different countries, which are represented across all the faculties. So um, when you graduate from Buckingham, you'll not only have um, academic colleagues and, um, and um, sort of uh, professional colleagues across the world, but you'll also have friends across the world as well. Okay, so where are we? Now, this is really important. It's really important that students understand where Buckingham is. Um, and you can see on the map there that there's some circles, uh, distant circles shown. Um, we are in the town of Buckingham. It has a river running through the middle of the campus called the Great Ouse, which is a lovely river. Um, and we are about 20 minutes drive from Milton Keynes. But it's very important to understand that Buckingham does not have a railway station. So to get to anywhere else in the country, you need to get to either Milton Keynes, Vista or Oxford. OK, um, we're equidistant more or less between Oxford and Cambridge. Cambridge is a little further than Oxford. Oxford's about 40 minutes. Cambridge is about an hour and 20 minutes away. Um, but it's this is the most important thing that I want everybody listening to understand. If you are planning to apply to the University of Buckingham and you are planning to commute to Buckingham, it's really important, important that you understand that unless you're half an hour away traveling distance, it's really unpracticable to, to commute to Buckingham. We would therefore recommend that if you're planning to apply to Buckingham um, and you've got family, for example, in London or Milton Keynes, and you're planning to commute from there, that would not be possible. Not only would it take you a long time to get to Buckingham from those places, um, it would also cost you a lot of money. Transport in the UK is very expensive um, and it, it would cost you as much as living on campus to buy a season ticket to travel daily to the university. On top of that, it would, it would make your study day very tiring because you'd have to leave very early in the morning, you'd get home very late at night, and you wouldn't have time to do your additional study that you need to do in order to do that. So I'm 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 being very, very clear about this. If you are planning to apply to Buckingham and you are your family and you're planning to live with family, if your family is not within 20 to 30 minutes driving distance or public transport distance of Buckingham, then you should really be considering applying for accommodation on campus. And we will be checking that. We, um, and the reason I say this is that it's particularly during COVID, we've had instances of students from all over the world who have applied to Buckingham, have uh, committed to staying with family and commuting to Buckingham, have started their course and have found it extremely expensive and very, very difficult and have dropped out of the course. And we don't want anyone to do that. We want students to complete their course and pass. Uh, we don't want to set anyone up to fail. So if you are if you are thinking of living with family, please ensure that it's within 20 to 30 minutes travel of Buckingham. Otherwise, then you should be you should be applying for accommodation on campus. OK, so that's um, that's Buckingham. And you can also see the crew campus. The crew campus um, uh, is uh, about an hour and 40 minutes from Milton Keynes by train. And it's then another 40 minutes to Manchester if you wanted to get into Manchester by train. So you could theoretically commute from Manchester, but not, not much further than Manchester uh, in distance to, to travel to Crewe if you're planning to apply to Crewe for one of our 
medicine or allied health programs. Okay. Okay, so what do we offer at Buckingham? So we have a number of faculties, um, but as you can see on the screen, I won't run through them all, but you can see that we offer a, a, a large number of social science uh, subjects. Um, we don't specialize in engineering. So if you're planning to apply for engineering to the UK, you wouldn't be able to apply to Buckingham because we don't offer that sort of program. Um, we specialize in uh, business, computing, economics, um, English literature, history of art, psychology, international studies and politics, um, uh, law and criminology, medicine, biomedicine and podiatry, security, intelligence and cybersecurity. Uh, and we offer a range of foundation programs for students who don't meet di don't meet entry requirements for direct entry to our um, undergraduate programs. So if your qualifications don't meet our entry requirements for um, undergraduate, we have a number of foundation programs that you can join that will automatically, if you pass them, obviously, um, allow you to continue on to our, our undergraduate programs. And I'll talk a bit more about those later. OK, so why did we develop the two year degree? Um, the University of Buckingham uh, pioneered the two year degree in the 1970s, late 1970s. Um, the university wanted to create degrees that prepare students for working life, the reality of working life, because normal degrees most you most degrees in the uk are three years for undergraduate um they have very long holidays and that's not that's not what real life is about real life is about working most of the time and having shorter holidays so we we put an extra term in every year during the summer you have lots of holidays when you study at buckingham but they're short holidays in between each term um there were lots of students um and still to this day, students being bored by the slower pace of a traditional degree, particularly in their first year. If you study on an undergraduate degree in the UK on a traditional three year degree at another university, the first year you just have to pass it. But none of the grades that you achieve in your first year go towards your final degree grade. It's only when you enter second year and you start submitting your exams and your uh, assignments that, your, that, that those points go towards your final degree classification. Whereas at Buckingham, from day one, every assignment that you submit and every exam you take goes towards your final degree classification. And then obviously in uncertain times, some students want to just get on with their lives. They want to complete their degree early um, and start work early and get, get on the career ladder faster. OK, so it, there's lots of benefits to the two year degree, notwithstanding the fee, um, the fee and cost savings uh, uh, on, the, on the accommodation and living expenses for your third year which we'll come on to later. OK, so how what does a two year degree look like? This is an illustration showing the January start. Um, it's exactly the same as a three year degree, the same honours and weight in the workplace. It's recognised by employers across the world and in the UK, and it has the same number of teaching weeks. It just has less holiday time. So as you can see, it's divided up into four terms. OK, um, and what we do is we add that extra term in the summer, as you can see on the screen, July, August and September. Uh, and in between each of those terms, there are holidays, typically two or three weeks, depending on whether the term has an exam week at the end of it or not. OK. Um, and what that means is that um, it works out cheaper overall because you're saving on a year's accommodation and living expenses. OK. OK, and what are the benefits of a two year degree? You graduate with an accelerated bachelor's degree in just two years, saving you time and living costs. Um, you improve your job prospects by gaining a mark. You can improve your job prospects by gaining a master's degree in your third year or starting work a year earlier. Um, a lot of our international students decide to stay with us and do a master's in a similar subject in their third year. And the reason they do that is because we offer some great incentives, uh, scholarships for graduates who have done well on our undergraduate degrees. So, for example, if you are graduating from your undergraduate degree at Buckingham, let's say you've studied an LLB in law and you graduate with a first class honours degree. If you decide to stay with us and do the LLM in your third year, um, we you will automatically um, win a scholarship of 33 percent discount on your master's tuition fee. If you graduate with a second class upper on your undergraduate degree, 
you will uh, automatically uh, win a scholarship of 25 percent uh, tuition fee discount off your master's tuition fee. Now, what that means is that if you add that scholarship discount together to the savings that you've made, which I'll come on to later um, uh, on your th uh, that third year's accommodation and living expenses that you would have would have had to pay if you join a traditional three year degree, you've actually paid for your master's in your third year, pretty much paid for your master's in your third year. Now, lots of universities will offer you big scholarships to entice you to join their undergraduate programs. We don't do that. We offer you scholarships to stay on with us and do your master's in your third year. And no other university can actually match the, the size of that scholarship. OK, um, so whether you've taken a gap year or you want a fresh start, two year degrees will keep you on track with your peers. So basically, you've got the option of either graduating with an undergraduate degree and starting work a year earlier than all your peers who have applied to universities elsewhere to do a three year degree. Or you've got the option of graduating at the same time as your friends, not only with an undergraduate degree, but also with a master's, which makes you highly more employable and attractive to employers. So I hope that makes sense. And if you've got any questions about that, we can talk that through later as well. So I'm not going to read this out, but just to leave it on the screen for a moment to give you an idea of what our students say about Buckingham. Um, just have a read through that. I'll give you a few moments to read through that. So Vanessa was an Italian student, actually with uh, origins in Nigeria, and Georgina was a, uh, I think, Canadian student. I think that's probably enough time for you to have read through that. I'll move on to the next slide. OK, so now we're going to talk about myths around two year degrees and the University of Buckingham. So the first myth is that two year degrees don't hold the same weight as a three year degree. Not true. Two year degrees are exactly the same as a three year degree. The amount of teaching time and the degree you receive at the end is the same as you would receive after a three year degree. Employers value both degrees, uh, degree structures equally. In fact, some employers actually value our degree, our two year degree over a three year degree because they know that if you've done well, let's say you've got a first class honours degree or a second class upper on from the University of Buckingham, having completed it in two years, it means that you've worked very hard to get that grade. So they know that 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 you're you're a strong candidate uh, um, for them to employ. Uh, the workload on a two year degree is unmanageable. Although our degrees are accelerated, your working week will look the same due to our uh, to the addition of a fourth term. This means that you can fit the same amount of teaching time without having to increase the day to day workload. And in fact, what we do is we load our exams at the end of the exam term, which means that when you have your holiday, it is holiday. You don't have to do any study because you don't have exams when you come back, unlike other universities where quite often even though you're on holiday, you're having to revise because you'll have exams when you get back uh, to back when you re resume um, your term uh, um, after your holiday. So at Buckingham, all your holidays are holidays. It means that you're not you're not having to revise for exams. You might want to do additional work and research and whatever, but um, that's up to you. Um, you. You won't be revising for exams during your holidays. So the third myth is that there are less opportunities for career progression, such as work placements during a two year degree. To some extent, that's true um, due to the unique structure um, and the additional term and the short holidays. Most of our programs don't have the option of a placement. You can add this uh, on some programs to make this, uh, make a three year degree. However, we do have an excellent career team to support your placement after university. They're superb. I work quite closely with them, uh, particularly around uh, graduate employability and all of those things. Uh, and they're they're very, very useful. Um, we have job boards available for graduates and uh, all sorts of things. And they will help you also with your employ employability skills, interview techniques, CV writing and all of those things. Um, and then the final myth, the accelerated pace of the degree means you can't make friends or join any societies. Untrue. Many of this, many of our students find the opposite is true. As you have less holiday, you have more time at university to form closer bonds. We also have lots of sports clubs and societies so you can participate in that you can participate in 
to ensure that you get the full university experience. And, and obviously we've got sports clubs um, and teams at every level for pretty much every sport. You can even learn to play horseback polo at, uh, at Buckingham. Um, as just one of the options. Our cheerleading team, for example, has won national competitions. Um, we also have lots of cultural clubs and societies. Um, and if there's any sport or society that is uh, that you, you, you discover Buckingham doesn't offer, you can approach the student union and ask to set up your own society. So let's say you, you're interested in playing, for example, lacrosse. OK, if you're interested in lacrosse, get together a group of people that might be interested in playing lacrosse. You can contact the uh, the student union and they will help you to set up the team and the society okay so um anything is possible as far as uh, social activities are concerned at buckingham okay so let's talk about fees how do our fees differ so essentially um the university you've got a comparison there between the university of buckingham tuition fee and a three-year degree at an alternative university the average price of a tuition fee at an alternative university so as you can see, our yearly tuition fee of 20,160 is more than a three year degree uh, yearly tuition fee of 14,000. However, if you multiply them by two, 40,320 pounds compared to three year degrees at 14,000 pounds per year, it comes to uh, 2,000 pounds less, slightly over 2,000 pounds less. But the big saving is actually based on our accommodation and living expenses. We um, uh, we estimate that an international student will need approximately £11,000 to cover all their accommodation and living expenses. Now, that's just not that's not just your accommodation. That's everything. That's your food and drink. That's your social life. Um, maybe in the winter you need to replace a winter coat. Uh, you might need to replace your laptop, maybe a flight home at Christmas, all of those things. All of that is covered in that £11,000. But you only need two years to cover. So you only have £22,000, whereas on a three year degree, you would need £33,000. So you can see the saving there, £62,000 in total, £320, uh, compared to £75,000 for a three year degree. So there's a, a massive saving for international students um, if you study at Buckingham. Now, obviously, if you decide to stay with us in your third year, and if you manage to get those scholarships that I talked about earlier, um, you know, you're, you're basically paying for the tuition fee in your third year with the savings that you've made on your accommodation and living expenses, plus that scholarship. And then all you've got to find is your accommodation and living expenses for that third year. So it really is a, a very interesting proposition for international students to consider. OK. Um, so we have if you go on our website. Um, and you look up scholarships and bursaries, there's a list of competitive scholarships and bursaries available that you can apply for. Um, for uh, there are some available for undergraduate, the majority are for postgraduate study, but there are a few available for undergraduate, depending on what subject. They're, some of them are subject specific, but they're all um, um, competitive scholarships that you would need to apply for. And in order to apply for a, a competitive scholarship, you would need to have obtained an offer from the university first. So essentially you submit your application, you receive your offer and then you apply for the scholarship afterwards. OK, once you received your offer and accepted your offer. Um, we also um, uh, encourage students to work part time. Now, on a tier, on a student visa, um, if you come to the UK, you're actually allowed to work up to 20 hours per week during term time and you're allowed to work uh, full time during the holidays. However, what I will say to you is that if you are thinking of if you're thinking that working part time is going to cover your accommodation or tuition fee costs or both, that reality is that's not going to happen. You need to consider that if you're going to be working part time, um, your um, any money any money you earn part time should be for additional luxuries, basically, to um, to enjoy with your friends, um, with your social life, or to buy things that you wouldn't normally be able to afford or to travel and visit places within around the UK uh, that you might be interested in. But it will not cover um, your accommodation and living expenses. Um, the minimum wage at the moment is £9.50 per hour. It's unlikely as a part time worker that you would earn more than that. And, you know, you're allowed to work 20 hours a week, but it's unlikely that you would have time to work 20 hours a week with your study schedule. 
um, to, to complete your studies effectively um, and do well on your course. Um, so um, a lot of our students do uh, join the university as ambassadors and then they get paid for the work that they do. There's a number of different roles that we have at the university and you'll be helping out with things like open days. Um, you'd be helping out with campus tours, showing prospective students around the campus. Um, you'd be helping out with um, the online chat on our website where students can ask you questions about courses and about living at Buckingham and the, the university and student experience. All of those things you can do as a student ambassador after you've had your training and you would be paid £9.50 an hour to do that. But as I said, please be be prepared to that you in order to study in the UK, you need to have the money in place to be able to cover your accommodation and living expenses and your tuition fees. And any money that you earn in addition to that is is your luxuries. It's it's your it's your pocket money, if you like. OK. OK, so applying to the University of Buckingham applications are accepted all year round we do have some deadlines um uh for the September and January intakes as far as various deadlines which are, are laid out to you in your offer letter um with regards to um when you should be paying when you should be submitting your English language uh proof of proficiency exams those sorts of things we have a September and January uh, intake um and you can apply to us either via UCAS or direct using the, our online application. Now, I would recommend um, students that are listening today that if you are planning to apply to Buckingham, that you apply through AH and Z um, because they will be able to help you with the whole process um, and also particularly around the visa process, which can be complicated. The other thing I would say is that give yourself time. Do not leave things to the last minute. Apply as early as possible for whatever intake you're planning to apply for because the particularly the visa process can take a long time and it is taking long longer than normal at the moment for visas to be issued because of the various covid and war crises that we have going on around the world so the the visa um uh the, the visa processing time is actually taking longer than normal at the moment so um, if you are planning to apply to any university in the uk not just buckingham my recommendation is to apply as soon as possible get your offer as soon as possible and then respond to your offer as soon as possible because that will move you to the next stage for progression to admission to Buckingham or to any other university. Um, both UCAS and direct applications require a personal statement, but when you're applying to Buckingham, if you're applying to us direct, not, at, not through UCAS, I would recommend that you personalise your, your statement, your personal statement um, to make it more specific to Buckingham. Because when you're applying through UCAS, you have to upload a, uh, a generic personal statement because you're applying to a number of different universities. For Buckingham, you can apply to us through UCAS, but you don't have to. So what that means is that you can use your five UCAS applications. Sorry, I'm trying to get my hand on the camera. Five UCAS applications for other universities, and you can apply to Buckingham direct. Because of our independent status, you have the option of applying to us either direct or through UCAS. I would therefore recommend that you use your other five choices for other universities and you apply to Buckingham Direct. And that means that you'll have more offers to consider at the end when once you've received all your offers. OK, so what do I need? What does a student need to apply? All of, obviously, we need to see if you're applying for undergraduate, we need to see copies of all your relevant certificates and transcripts from high school. Um, uh, if you're applying as a postgraduate, we'll need to see your transcripts from your undergraduate degree and your, your degree certificate. Um, we will also need to see evidence of English language. Um, now, um, this is kind of a, U a, a visa requirement for the UK. So we need to assess your English language. Now, Buckingham, because we're a small university, we don't have our own English language test that you can um, submit. So you would have to submit one of the uh, published English language tests that we require. Uh, 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 so, for example, IELTS, TOEFL, Pearson, Pearson Online, Cambridge, and the new there's a new Scottish um, uh, English language exam that we, we've recently um, uh, accepted. Okay, and transcripts. Uh, yes, yeah, so your transcripts I've, I've mentioned already. Any transcripts either from your high school grades or from your uh, your undergraduate if you're applying for postgraduate. So Jahid has asked a question, but we'll we'll come to that at the end. I'm not quite sure what she means by that, but we'll we'll come to that later. 
OK, so this is the offer holder timeline. Once you've submitted your application and you've received your offer and then you decide to accept your offer from Buckingham, this, will, this is what would happen next, is that you in your offer letter, you will be told, it will be outlined to you what you need to pay for your, uh, to, to secure your place on the course. And that would be your deposit and bond. Now, normally the deposit is the, uh, the um, tuition fees are divided into four payments across the academic year. Um, so it would be the, the first term's tuition fee as your deposit. And the bond is what we call a refundable bond. It's like a, a, an additional deposit, but that's refundable. It's normally around £500. But as I said, it's outlined in your offer letter. And that, that £500 is refunded to you at the end of the course, as long as you don't have any outstanding debt with the university. So, for example, if as long as you don't have any library fines outstanding or if um, you've, you've paid all your, all your accommodation payments are up to date, you will automatically get that £500 refunded to you. OK, the next stage, once you've submitted, if you've paid your deposit is to book your accommodation on our accommodation portal on our website. And the sooner you do that, the better, because you're more likely to get the, the, the accommodation that you want rather than being allocated accommodation. If you leave it late, the accommodation fills up and then the accommodation office will allocate you accommodation. And it may not be the accommodation that you want. It might be more expensive than you're hoping or it might be the it might be an accommodation in an area or, a, or, a, or a, a hall of residence that you prefer not to go to. But the later you leave it, the more likely it is that that will happen. So I, my recommendation is book your accommodation early. You don't have to pay anything when you book your accommodation. Um, you can reserve it initially and then you pay closer to, to arrival. You, you pay a deposit closer to arrival. Um, once you've uh, re once we've re received the university's received um, your deposit and bond in our bank account, we um, uh, will then uh, send you what's called a confirmation of acceptance of study document. It's called a CAS. OK. And that document is what you need to apply for your student visa. You submit your application. As I said to you before, if you're working with AH and Z, they will guide you through this process and help you with the whole process because it is complicated um, and, uh, uh, you know, and it's not easy to, 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 to prepare for. So you will need support and guidance with that. And I would recommend AH and Z um, that, uh, as, a, as, a, as a support me uh, mechanism for you. Um, you then apply for your student visa. Um, and then once you've received your student visa, you arrive on campus in time to register and start your course. It's really, really important that you arrive on campus and register as soon as possible as, uh, uh, on, on registration. The later you leave it, the less likely you are to be allowed to register. We, we will give as long as we know in advance, we will give you up to two weeks leeway. If you're plan if you if you have issues and you're, you're you you have to arrive late, but after that, it's unlikely that we will have allow you to register, and it may mean that you would defer. And the reason for that is that because, as I've mentioned before, the degree is accelerated, and from day one, you are working and submitting coursework. And the, if you the more the more you miss in the first part of your course, you will be playing catch up all the time, and you will struggle to keep up with your studies. So it's really important that everybody. Um, that uh, tries to get here on time for registration and also for induction. Induction week is really important for students. It's when you learn all about all of the university, you get your timetable, all of that stuff. Um, you get to meet people. There's various activities laid on for you by the student union and by the faculties, ice breaking sessions and social events. All of that stuff is really important at the beginning of your course. So we, 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 recommend that you try and join us as as on on the registration date and then you register on campus and join our induction activities as i mentioned before okay okay so what are we looking for as far as grades are concerned now um these kind of may make sense to you but um not necessarily and what i would recommend you do particularly for students from uh pakistan india and if we've got any from bangladesh as well um, you go onto our website and we've got uh, on the international page of our website, we've got um, all the grades that you need to uh, for undergraduate and postgraduate for your specific country. So the high school grades or the or the postgraduate grades. OK, but um, as a general rule, we need 
grades equivalent to, for undergraduate, equivalent to uh, um, three Bs or BCC at A-level, depending on the subject. Some subjects have slightly lower entry requirements, some have higher. For everything except medicine for undergraduate, medicine, you will need the equivalent of ABB at A-level, including biology and chemistry. And actually, if you're applying from any of your countries, you will need to take A-levels to join our medicine program uh, or the IB program. Um, so you will need included in those three A-levels, you will need chemistry and biology um, and you will need ABB in both those subjects plus one other subject. Most students take mathematics um, as the other option because they're applying to other universities that require math mathematics. Buckingham doesn't for medicine, but some other universities do. However, what you don't need to, to apply for medicine in uh, Buckingham that you might do at other universities is either the UCAT or BMAT qualification. We don't require that. OK, so for postgraduate um, uh, study, you will need either a first or second class honours degree. Some of our programmes require us a, a minimum of a second class upper. Some of our postgraduate programmes require a minimum of a second class lower. So you will need to check that or, or, or um, your guidance counsellor at AHZ will need to check that with us or, or on our website. It's all published on our website. Um, now, if you're, entry, if you're planning to study uh, undergraduate at Buckingham, but your grades don't meet our entry requirements, we have what are called integrated foundation programmes. Um, and what they are is essentially a foundation pathway program. So if you, for example, if you wanted to study business or law, you would do the uh, integrated three year program where you would do your foundation pathway in business or law or economics or business or, or uh, psychology or whatever it is you want to study um, first. And then you would progress on to the undergraduate degree as long as you pass that foundation year first with 60 percent grade point average or above. OK, if you pass with 60 percent or above, you'll automatically graduate uh, directly onto the your your, uh, your chosen undergraduate subject. But the benefit of applying to Buckingham for foundation is that you can integrate the whole thing on one visa. Now, most foundation programs in the UK are standalone foundation programs, which means that you have to um, study the foundation program. You have to return to your home country to reapply for the visa to then return to do your foundation program. You don't have to do that at Buckingham. You can do the whole thing on one visa and you automatically progress straight onto the onto the undergraduate program, having completed your uh, uh, foundation pathway. OK, the other benefit of that is that we have a really nice incentive for you to do well on your foundation in that if you pass and progress uh, onto your undergraduate degree, from the, our foundation program, you will get a fee reduction on your first year of your undergraduate degree of £2,500. OK, so that's an incentive for you to do well and stay with us to do your, uh, your undergraduate program. OK, we also have um, some uh, postgraduate medicine courses available. These are for qualified doctors. So if there are, are qualified doctors on the call, um, we have some postgraduate, uh, we have a um, Masters in Surgery and a Masters in General Medicine as well, um, which may be of interest to qualified doctors. But you do need to be a qualified and practicing doctor to apply for those. OK, so here's our English language requirements. I won't go through them all. They're all on the website. But basically, um, we these are the, the, the English language requirements that we accept for entry. Um, uh, now, these are general. So we, we're looking for a score of um, IELTS 6.0 um, um, for foundation, but um, for undergraduate, we're looking for 6.5 and you need a minimum of six in all four components, reading, writing, listening and speaking. Um, for foundation, you need IELTS 6 with a minimum of 5.5 in each component. However, if you're applying for medicine, the IELTS requirement is 7.0 with a minimum of 6.5 in all four components. So it's important that you uh, check our entry requirements for each course uh, as far as uh, medicine is concerned. This is just a general overview. Most of our undergraduate programs require IELTS 6.5 or, or equivalent. So TOEFL, as you can see, Cambridge or Pearson. OK. OK, so we have a number of uh, open days throughout the year. We've actually doing a virtual open day today for our crew campus for our medicine and allied health programs. Um, 
But what you can do is you can either go to the Buckingham uh, page, um, open days page, uh, and you can actually do a virtual open day, um, uh, which is kind of like a, 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 a YouTube video. Uh, or you can, we've got some, uh, keep, keep checking that because we've got some uh, virtual open days coming up, very similar to how we're doing it today, presentations online and Q&A sessions uh, from various different departments and faculties. Um, and so keep keep an eye on those two links on, on my screen, buckinghamac.uk open days. Um, and when you go to that, you will also see a link to university events at Buckingham. And that's got a number, and I really recommend you join these, uh, a number of what we call faculty and subject webinars available where you can join free of charge, um, taster days. Um, so for various different subjects where academics and students are presenting and talking about the programs and what it's like to study on that program and campus life and student life on, uh, at Buckingham. So really, really interesting presentations that you can watch and interact with, ask questions at the end as well. OK, keep it up. Definitely recommend that you um, uh, keep an eye on on those uh, on our website. Also follow our socials. I'll come on to that in a moment here. Um, so you can see all of our socials. We have a, a Instagram account, a Facebook account and a Twitter account. OK. Um, and the main contact for any questions uh, um, at, uh, from me, basically, is the, uh, the email at, at the top there, international office at buckingham.ac.uk. OK, and that's kind of the end of my presentation. Um, so we can now open up to questions. Let me see if I can close this. Thank you, Tina. It was a really nice presentation. And I think the students, they found out all the important information about uh, university <clears throat> entry requirements and uh, the courses. Now, um, can you give us some example, which are the most popular courses at the University of Buckingham? Well, it really does depend on what parts of the world. But if we, I, I'm, I'm assuming that the majority of students that are joining us today are from South Asia. Um, uh, so places like Bangladesh, Pakistan, um, India, um, maybe Sri Lanka as well. Um, and actually, a, a lot of a lot of our programs are very popular across those. So obviously, business programs are very popular. Our computing programs are very popular. And actually, our, our computing programs have um, some interesting scholarships available, particularly for women in STEM. So we have some scholarships available, particularly for women who are interested in studying computing. And we specialize in things like artificial, artificial intelligence, robotics, um, the Internet of Things, big data, all of those sorts of things we are uh, specialists in. Um, also, but things like security and intelligence, we've had students from various parts of South Asia on those programs. Um, economics, politics, international studies, and obviously medicine. But obviously medicine is, the application process is a bit more complicated, the entry requirements are higher, and medicine is very much more expensive than any other program. So if anyone's got questions about medicine, I can talk about those here. Um, so yeah, I think there's a, there's a question here from Sada. Yeah, Sada, but... Um... Mention a different university. So if um, Sardar apply to our agency, I think it's better to contact your counselor and they can advise you exactly in regards with the application for the visa and um, yeah. for the past letter. Um, we got a question previously in regards from Jahida. Um, do you accept MOI, medium of instruction in English, to meet the entry requirements in regards with the English? Um, they study previously in English, they're bachelor level, uh, if they can apply for master or if they study at the high school level, can they apply so for graduate? For foundation and bachelor, we don't, unfortunately, we would need an IELTS or equivalent. Um, we would consider it depending on where and what, what part of the universe, what, what part of the world, we would consider um, um, MOI for postgraduate. However, we probably want to interview you pre uh, pre offer. Okay. Um, Royal okay. University, I don't know, so I can't answer that question. Okay. I have another question in regards with the courses. Do you have any courses with a placement here available, or with placement after finishing their master? No, not that. Not um, not included on the program. 
what we what we have is a really good, as I mentioned previously, a, a really good careers department that will help find placements, uh, internships, uh, and even jobs um, to students who, who are graduating from either from undergraduate or postgraduate. But we, because of the, the structure of the two year degree, because of the the the, the because the holidays are much shorter, there is no time in the academic year for meaningful internships or placements. So they would have to do it at the end of their course. Okay. And for students who join later, um, I know that also AHNZ is encouraging students to submit their application as soon as possible. But do you have a deadline for September intake for the applications? Uh, yes, I would recommend that they apply no later the end of July, 31st of July, because and that was then, yeah, at the very latest for September. And what's the turnaround time after submitting their application to get an offer letter? On average, about three weeks. Three weeks. Okay. Yeah. And do you and know? That's really, you know, that's probably a bit longer than most other universities, but that's because Buckingham's very small. And so the teams that we have, the admissions teams are very small, but the number of applications that we get, as you can imagine, is similar to most other universities. It's just that the university is a much smaller institution. So our turnaround time is slightly longer. And do you know approximately when the cast will start the issue for September in intake? Well, it really is down to that we, we issue as soon as it, we issue CAS as soon as the student has received, we've re re received all the correct documentation We've done the, we've received the deposit and the bond. Um, they then get sent of what's called, students will get sent what's called a pre-CAS uh, questionnaire, um, asking lot from our visa team, asking lots of questions, but also asking to show the proof of um, financial uh, requirements for the tier four visa. So 28 days, the full tuition fees in the, in the account and one terms accommodation and living expenses. But that's all laid out as part of, is you know in stages once you know pay your deposit then you receive the cas pre cas documents as soon as we receive receive the pre cas documents and they have been approved we will then um send out the cas letter for submission but it's quite quick the, the visa team are quite quick okay and in regards with the pre cas questionnaire will it be just a questionnaire or also an interview a pre cas interview no we don't uh, we don't it's very rare that we do a pre cas interview so only a if questionnaire. You, if, you're, if you're asked for interview, it's normally pre-offer. Oh, okay, okay, that's great. And uh, is the university accepting the second master? Sorry, the second master? Yes. Is the what university? Do you mean by that? So if a student studied already a master in the if they want to apply for a second master, even if they study, for example, a master in their home country and they want to apply for another master in the UK, is the university accepting it? We, we would consider it, but it would need, we would need to, um, the, the issue is that UKVI like to see progression. So if a student has done an undergraduate and they're applying for an undergraduate, unless it's something like law or medicine, then it's a bit of a gray area. We would, we would need to consider that. If a student, if there's been a gap in study where a student's been working, we might consider that as a, as a viable reason for it. Um, but we it, it's all about the um, uh, considering the risk for the university of a visa refusal or not. OK, so um, depending, it really would depend on what the students studied before and what they're applying for masters wise. Um, we have done it in the past. It will probably require an interview um, for us to make a decision. Um, but um, if it's, uh, you know, if you're going from, you know, something like a master's in um, I don't know, uh, let's say a master's in public health to a master's in computing, then it's a completely different, you know, then it's unlikely that you would you would get an offer because okay. there's, no, there's no background. Because you mentioned about the study gap. What is the maximum study gap accepted by the University of Buckingham? We don't have a maximum. If a student can sh can, can evidence that they've, they've had a, a period of work and that and we, we take work experience into consideration as part of an application as well. So if a student, oh. let's say a student studied an LLB a few years ago, maybe five, six, ten, maybe even 15 years ago, has been practicing and as a lawyer and has decided to apply to us to do an LLM, we will take into consideration that work experience as part of the application. Okay, great, great. Thank you, Tina, uh, for all the information. 
uh, today and uh, for accepting our invitation to uh, participate our to our live session. Um, we are welcoming now everyone. I think we have a five minutes break until 11, uh, where we'll have the Zoom one-to-one. -one. So you can join there and you can ask questions directly to Tino and also um, our AHNZ colleagues will be there and they can assess you, your file and all the questions. So thank you, Tino, once again. It's been an absolute pleasure, Alina. Nice to meet you. And I hope my presentation has given everyone lots of information um, and, uh, and, and will help you make a decision as to whether you apply to Buckingham or whether Buckingham is the right university for you or not. You know, and, and, and let's be honest, Buckingham is an unusual university for various different reasons. So, um, you know, it's a, a great university with great benefits and, and uh, lots of benefits, particularly around the two year degree. But it may be that Buckingham's not the right choice for you. And that's fine as well. So talk to your counsellors because they will be able to help you with that. Of course, of course. Thank you, Tino, once again. Take care. See you later. Bye.